Okay. Uh, well, congratulations, and and thank and you. I have to say thank you because seriously, if it hadn't been you know your initiative, mm-hmm. I don't know if we'd be sitting here right now. <laughs> what uh, tempted you to actually draw a comic book mm-hmm. to sell this, and not right. just like text? Well, thanks to Arthur Conan Doyle. It's, it's all due to him. Uh, look, I, I'm a big fan of Sherlock Holmes. Um, I had always uh, imagined him, though, when I read the stories, differently to what I'd seen on film before. And I had to figure out the most efficient way to show the people at Warner Brothers what I had in my head. And honestly, it was just uh, the image of him with the deer stalker on the pipe is so ingrained that I knew I needed something more than just me to say, oh, I'm going to do it differently. So I I found this amazing man called John Watkiss, who's a brilliant artist, and he drew these images for me. And that's what sold the movie to the to the studio. Amazing. Yeah, I have to say, I think I like Robert Downey in those cool hats that he was wearing. He looks great, doesn't he? Yeah, he looks, looks great in anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was it about? You know, what is it about Sherlock Holmes that just keeps us intrigued all these years later mm-hmm. after the character was created? I think he. Uh, I think what it is is well, uh, is um, he's both. He's so intelligent. He's a superhero on one level. He's absolutely brilliant. His superpower is his brain. He so he's he's exceptional. But he's also terribly human, and uh, and sort of uh, you see his weakness, you see the darkness, and I think it's that combination of the two you can sort of identify with him in, in a way, and he's, he's uh, because of that I think. Why do he and Watson complement each other? I think it's the thing of uh, they both help each other out. It, Sherlock desperately needs Watson to, to to look after him. He he can't manage otherwise, and I think Watson needs needs Sherlock uh, is sort of inspiration in his life. So I think they make a wonderful couple. They're very complementary. And and watching the you know relationship build between Robert Downey and Jude Law, mm-hmm. I mean, I would suspect that you were on set and you know watching this transgression, you yeah. know, this transformation that the two of them had, um, you know, I think they've had it has the best chemistry yeah. on screen that I've seen yeah. in a long time. Yes, yeah, it was love at first sight. Uh, I mean, you know, we actually met them in this hotel uh, that they met together, and then Guy and I and Susan uh, were, in, were in the lobby of the hotel waiting for them. They came down having met for two hours. And we just saw them walking together, and you knew that they were just perfect together. It was fantastic. Well, yeah, what was it like them watching them on set together and just develop it? You know? A joy. I mean, a joy. I mean, you've, you've seen them on film. They are. They're fantastic together. I just kept pinching myself, thinking, how, God, I'm so bloody lucky to have these two amazing actors doing this. And of course, you know, Robert's the perfect Sherlock, but her, uh, but Jude is also the perfect Watson, as he much closer to, to he was uh, the way he was in the books mm-hmm. than what we've seen. The typical Nigel Bruce type uh, bumbling Watson. So, Are we ever yeah. going to see your comic book? Um, probably not. I mean, uh, honestly, it was made as a selling tool. Uh, I talked to DC Comics about it. Mm-hmm. They, they they said yes, we'll do we'll do it uh, when the movie comes out. Uh, but of course, by the time uh, we actually got to making the movie, I was way too busy to actually finish it and do it properly for a, as a for publication. Well, yeah, I think you need to get on that because I really want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got an idea for something. For a, for a sort of origin story comic book, uh, Sherlock as a as a young kid, and I may do that. Oh, that would be so, so fascinating. We'll yeah. um, also, Guy Ritchie again, another yeah. brilliant decision, and you know, giving yeah. him this film to direct. Watching him work, and you know, uh, you know, especially that he's British, he knows mm-hmm. the locations and things, but he just really got to the heart of this. He did. He did. I, I used to before I had the drawings. I was always looking for a way to define the movie, so I I always used to call it the Guy Ritchie version of a Sherlock Holmes movie. Because I think what Guy has done, uh, I mean, very importantly for sort of British cinema, is he, you know, with Lockstock and with Snatch, he sort of redefined cinema uh, in England and a type of, you know, and took took us from being much more sort of naturalistic and kind of quite staid to something a bit more stylized and a bit fresher and with a bit more energy. And I really wanted to give Holmes that because that's how I felt reading the, the reading the stories. It was exciting adventure, sort of, you know. Pulse pounding stuff. Do you know what I mean? So. Absolutely. How do you think Holmes and Watson would be in the 21st century? Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, they're so cool, aren't they? So I think they'd be, you know, and, and London, London is different, very different, but in a way, it's the same. It's still that melting pot. There's still all that wonderful stuff going on in London. I think, I think Sherlock would love modern London and, and would thrive here. But what's yeah. interesting is that, you know, he uses his brain. He's so smart to how he deduces yeah. things and deducts things, and and then. If he was in the 21st century, would he would he rely on the BlackBerry and all the things that would be available to him? Well, remember, he he's he's, he's he loves science. He loves technology. I, I mean, that's one of the things he does. He, he's constantly, you know, do, performing his own experiments way ahead of his time. I mean, he's the first sort of CSI type of practitioner 
there's ever been. So I think he would love that, and he'd be fascinated by all the new technology, and absolutely he'd use it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool yeah. to think about it. Yes. See, that's what you should be writing. You know, that would be bringing them into... <laughs> now, do, do you think they're superheroes? Like, they're kind of Batman and Robin issue yes. way. Absolutely. Look, I mean, uh, Sherlock is definitely a superhero. I mean, and his superpower is his brain. No question about it. Yeah, that's no for question. sure. So yeah. are you thinking about, you know, I, I, there's no doubt in my mind that you're going to be making more of these these films. Has, has, I has, hope you're right. I know Thank it's, you. Yeah, it's hard to kind of, you know, before it's something, yeah. but there's no question. I mean, yeah. it, do, have you people started to think about yeah. stuff like that? And Look, we, we, we had a great time making these movies. We would love to do it again. Any excuse to all get together again and do this? We felt so privileged to be able to do it. So yes is the answer, but obviously we're going to wait to see how the film does, and hopefully if everybody likes the film as much as they seem to, then hopefully we've got a, got a good chance to do it. And what's great, too, to. is that it's being introduced to a whole new generation. Yes, you know? I mean, my kids, so 13 and 17, they've heard of Sherlock Holmes, but don't really know. And I, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, obviously yeah. the appeal of having Robert Downey Jr. play him and, and Jude uh, Watson, there's going to be all these kids now that are going to be just... Yeah. It's interesting to see Absolutely. this perspective. You know? Well, for, for me, also as a father, I mean, I, I really hope that, uh, that this will inspire kids and adults as well to go back to the stories from which this came and read them because they are fantastic. And without Sir Arthur and without the stories, we wouldn't have this film. So. Yeah. You've been wonderful yeah. for Warner Brothers. And uh, again, you know, bringing uh, Harry Potter to, mm -hmm. the, to them. Like, holy, you know, <laughs> did you ever foresee that that was going to be what it's become? Uh, at the time, no. I mean, I, you know, I, it was really my friend David Heyman, uh, who, who who I grew up with, who brought me the books. I was an executive at Warner's at the time, and uh, we both we both loved the story. We could tell it was a it was a, it was a wonderful, great fantasy adventure story. It was like the sort of stories that we we grew up with, go, you know, going to the cinema at Easter or at Christmas, you know, mm -hmm. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Wizard of Oz, all those wonderful movies, uh, Mary Poppins, and we thought maybe Harry Potter could be something like that. And, of course, we never in our wildest dreams imagined that it would be this worldwide phenomenon that it has become. It's and also, I mean, having Daniel, Emma, and Rupert and how they've held up yes. through all these pictures. They're and they're just yeah. wonderful yeah. kids. They're, they're so wonderful. They're so great. And Chris Columbus did an amazing job casting them. He really did. And yeah. it turned out brilliant. Well, kudos to you on everything, really. Thank this you. This is so <laughs> much fun, and I uh, really enjoyed Thank talking so to you. Much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you Great to much. meet you. Thank great you to meet you, too.